Okay, so hello and welcome back to another banknote. So I haven't made any of these videos for five years. So two first name, I think it was the last time I made these gorgeous videos. So we need to update the actual value of uh, this coin on the market. So what we're talking about is the 1988 uh, Australian ten dollar banknote. As you can see, I've quite a few of them here. So on one side we have the colonial, uh, a colonial ship. So I, so this should be Sydney Cove, uh, with the HMA supply. So that's one of the ships of the first fleet. Well, I forgot a lot of information of the first fleet, so uh, I didn't worry about it. Uh, uh, learning about it. So what we have here, we have um, various people with different trades. And this actually looks like it's going to the modern time. Because uh, their clothing here, it's pretty much 20th century. Clothing on these two people. That guy looks like a, a swagman. So, going around carrying a billy, looking for work. Yeah, especially in the Great Depression. Then we have the centre. So we've got... Chinese worker We've got a camel rider and one of those should be an Afghan because all all of the uh, earlier Camel traders in Australia were Afghans. They come from Afghanistan And we have a digger so a digger is an Australian soldier So these are not people to come on the first fleet. These were the people who would have uh, Been Here for a long time. They would have come later and this one Worked on the gold field. The Chinese also worked on the gold fields. And the early... So I should have actually gone the other way. So these would have been the style of clothing people come from uh, on the first fleet. So this would have been the 1700s. They had top hats. Uh, they would have had muskets. This guy is in the military. You can tell by his clothing. Uh... This is probably more upper class, uh, definitely a worker, agricultural workers. That guy's probably a landowner. And these other people are various farmers in the family. So I've never actually had a close look at those people. And here we have the first settlement of Anzac Cove. So that looks like the English flag, not the Union Jack. And here with early settlement with a with the eucalyptus trees in the background. So that's more like wood settlement, probably also using bluestone. And if we go to the ship, there's a few people on it. I personally don't like sailing ships. I don't know, I just don't know don't like them. And here we have another scene in the background. And we also have tents. So a lot of them would have been living in tents until they could build dwellings. Then we have the signature, Fraser and Johnson. And we have the magnetic see-through window with Captain James Cook, who was killed in Hawaii. And here we have the number 10. So on the back, we have uh, Aboriginal youth. Uh, Morning Star Pole, which is this pole going along there. We have rock paintings in the background. And this is obviously a person. So I haven't found out what this is. It's probably a mythological character from uh, one of the dreaming times of Aboriginal Australia. We have hand stencils and have a type of uh, imagery in the background. So that's actually quite nice. I like this side. And obviously this young man has been tattooed. Uh, indigenous tattooing. It's different cultures around the world use their different types of tattoos. So that's a basic uh, uh, background of the actual banknote. Now who actually designed it? I don't know. It's probably various people who put their input into the actual design. Uh, so these also came in these folders. So this is a commemorative folder. And these ones cost about $30 to $40. Uh, 
in the five years since the last video these haven't moved really much in value and these ones should all have the AA banknote so they've got information on it if you want to pause and read it okay so it's got information about the technology uh, on one side of the note relates to original inhabitants uh, original culture rock painting hand stencil portrayal of aboriginal youth body and morning star okay Yumbulu is an example of poles used by Aboriginal people in North East Arnhem Land. I think they're the Yongwu Marfa people. Some original works commissioned by the bank from Aboriginals has been used in a background pattern. Okay, so they should be well paid. Okay, so if we look at this banknote, so this is not the circulating one. Uh, so it has AA as the prefix. And also it should have a date. So this is the 16th of January 1888 when the first fleet first arrived. Okay, so looking at the catalogue, uh, the first prefix is AA00 and the last one is 23. So it should indicate there's probably 23 million of these banknotes, but it gives an indication that there's only 800,000. So I'm not too sure how many of the actual folders were issued, but they seem to be quite common. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if it's, you know, quite a high number. And there probably as is other types of folders issued, like there's a staff folder. Uh, and if you get a first or last prefix, you so the first prefix obviously is about $150. Last prefix, you're probably talking about, I don't know, the same $150. Uh, these ones, yeah, about $40, $30, $40. They used to be able to pick these up for 30 bucks, but it's, it's a struggle to get it for that anymore. So these would probably just move in with inflation. Okay, and there's information about that on the front. Okay, so another thing we need to know is that these have two print runs. So what you need to look at is the serial numbers. So the ones issued for circulation are all AB. And what you need to look for is the second and third number. So this is 93, this is 22. So the first print run, they had a problem with uh, this breaking apart. And if I play with these too much, I add that the metallic thread will probably, uh, not metallic thread, the, uh, yeah, this, oh, whatever they call it, I can't remember, will probably damage. So uh, the first pre print run had 93, 94, or 96 as the third and fourth number. This one has 22. So this is the second print run. So this is the more common. Okay, so the first prefix of the first print run, so these banknotes here, is 10. And the last one is uh, 57. So let's see. Okay, so this is 35, but then the Renix catalog has got 33. So maybe this one is the second prefix. So it gets a bit confusing. So, and here we have a 94. So that one's a bit confusing to me. Okay, 94. Which is the second print run. Well, this is 20, so this is within the actual... Uh, database so a b 20 94 this is the first print run this is a b 31 so the last prefix for this one is 57 and 22 so this is the second print run so um what i'm thinking is that in the second print run 
footy third and fourth number. They just didn't print the numbers 93, 94, 96. But in the second print run, which this probably is, they did use the numbers 33, 34, and... Ah, uh, not 33. 93, 94, and 96. And that's why we get this discrepancy, because the first print run should finish at AB 33, but this is 35. So, uh, the only way you can tell is if um, you actually try and damage the, uh, the actual window, or maybe uh, they could actually clear this up in the Renix catalog and Avocat catalogs as well. So that is uh, the beautiful banknote from 1988. Not a very scarce banknote, pretty easy to get. And the report of mint printage, not mintage, mintage. You mint coins, you print banknotes. Uh, is 17 million 500 thousand. So obviously less than the population now. It was more to, uh, with the population back then, which I think was about 15 million. So anyway, let me know what you think of these banknotes. I think they're actually quite good. Thank you very much, and have an awesome banknote. And oh, also, if you can clear this up for me, that would be great. Thank you, and goodbye.